democracy different from a dictatorship is an all party system it's not just one party it's multiple parties multiple parties that govern across the country for instance in india instead of that one party a chinese communist party perhaps that rules 1.4 billion people in china india sees an array of parties they go from the extreme left to somewhat center right it doesn't matter who's in the central government it could be the upa it could be the nda but when it comes to a crisis like the one we are witnessing in the ladakh sector every party is on board every party turns to the ruling government at the center to support the national stand to trust it to do the right thing yesterday was supposed to be no different the all india party meet was chaired by the prime minister yet three parties decided to go against the national interest decided to take a stand which was anti government now when it comes to a crisis like the one we are witnessing in ladakh it's no longer about the government it's no longer about the soldiers alone it's about the country and yet there are two parties to begin with i'll come back to the third later there are two parties to begin with which has always taken a very different stand to what the ruling government in the center might be now this has nothing to do with narendra modi if one might think this has nothing to do with the nda even or akhil bihari vajpayee or sonia gandhi it has something to do with ideology the communist party of india and the communist party of india marxists which was a part of the cpi initially they've always found themselves aligned to chinese interests by means of ideology perhaps sharing a common ideology pulls them together or perhaps draws them even closer to what beijing thinks or beijing feels what can be any other reason for the cpi to insist yesterday that prime minister narendra modi shouldn't get shouldn't be drawn into an alliance with the us against china now we all know the crisis that has brewed between the us and china and the us is looking for allies india for long has refused to understand that china is an enemy and today perhaps has waken up to that reality and also the ties between india and the united states have never been that close so cpi instead of blaming the chinese for the misadventures in ladakh chose to blame the government for being too close to the united states but that wasn't all it the cpim whose sitaram yechuri has been the face of many provocative statements against the government went ahead and said that the government the indian government should recall the punch shield uh, pa- uh, punch shield principles in dealing with china why is that that the cpi and cpim always have a stand which is against the national government let's go back a bit 4 5 years before india would be independent 1943 a bengal region has been ravaged by terrible famine millions and millions of people are dying will die the british government is occupied in europe with its war efforts the resources are dire so what does the communist party the communist group in bengal do at this time do they come forward and help the people the very people they claim to back no they in fact encourage the british government for its war efforts and choose not to criticize them but that's not it 15 years later we have the 1962 war with china a war which has left a deep impact on the people of india even today we remember that war as a black chapter in indian history what was the cpi doing then was it mobilizing resources for the indian soldiers was it helping generate awareness against the ideology that was waging war against india no in fact it was busy firing members who were calling for a blood donation camp to support indian army yes the very cpi party was against a blood donation camp for the indian soldiers some members of the cpi went ahead and he actually blamed the indian government for being alienated to the struggles of the peasants in china they said that the indian ruling classes were not understanding the struggles of the chinese people and thus probably they bought the war upon themselves now all this is a part of history the cpi had displayed the cpim came into existence and we've always seen those governments take an anti national stand what is anti national may be subjective but whatever has not been aligned with the national interest cpi and cpim have chosen to go with that they wanted india in the first term of the modi government not to have close ties with israel even though the importance of it from a security point of view from a diplomatic point of view from point of view of the middle east politics is very very important and yet they did not want something like that to happen on 16 june just on the day the news of the 20 indian soldiers being killed in the ladakh sector broke 
the CPIM was busy protesting against anti-Modi policies. Now, of course, some very amateur fact-checkers may tell you that the protest was not against Chinese or uh, was not for or against the Chinese soldiers, but the timing of it actually raises some important questions. 20 Indian soldiers are dead in the Ladakh sector and all the CPIM could think of was a protest against the Modi government. But that's not it. There have been pl plenty of instances when the, uh, when the CPI and CPIM have been against Indian interests all the time. 2017, Doklam. India is in a very stern standoff against China. None is agreeing to budge their sides. So what does CPIM say at this point? They say that India should lead, let Bhutan take the lead and go back, take a step back. Perhaps the idea was for China to sway over Bhutan and take the land that was in contention. But then that's CPIM for you. They've never been with the government either way. There's another interesting story which comes from the recent Stark meeting that Narendra Modi called for for putting together funds for the Sark countries in the wake of the COVID-19 crisis. Pakistan, as it always is, was immature to come up with the Kashmir issue at the SARC meeting. The other government obviously criticized it, the government of other countries. The parties couldn't see the sense to it. But there was one party which actually saw it as a very sensible move. And yes, it was the CPIM. Then there was the army, the attack on the army chief. The uh, army chief very recently made a statement against stone pelters in Kashmir. Stone pelters who are children, driven out of schools and colleges and told to take up stones against the military. Who came out in this support? It was again, the CPIM. The problem with the CPIM is not that of ideology alone, but that it has become so blind in its ideology, even the CPI for that matter, that they cannot understand that the CPC, the Communist Party of China has moved ahead. It has moved ahead in the way it thinks. The ideology may remain, but it has moved towards a more capitalistic point of view as evident by its economic takeover of the world. The CPI and CPIM are perhaps still stuck in the 1960s where they think a great communist world will take over. They're wrong. They will always be wrong. But it's not just about CPI and CPM alone. There was one other party yesterday which actually questioned or chose not to trust the government when it came to its stand in the Ladakh sector. That was the Congress. Now, it would be foolish to say that the Congress has been anti-national for under its governance, India has been in war in 1965 and 1971, which led to the creation of Bangladesh. So none can actually doubt the nationalistic credentials of the Congress party. But it seems to be a new Congress party under the influence of three family members alone. And they chose not to trust the government. So is Congress also following the lead of the CPIA and CPIM when it comes to taking the national stance? One last question is also warranted. It was a meeting of national parties. It was important for the national parties to be on board with the action being planned by the government, with the information being circulated by the government. So why was CPI and CPIM, uh, CPI with just three out of the 543 members in Lok Sabha, five out of 245 members in Rajya Sabha, and out of the 4,100 state legislative assembly seats that exist, it just has around 100 of them. The Communist Party is far worse. It has just two out of 543 members in the Lok Sabha. So why are these parties still called national parties? They do not represent enough people. They do not represent people at, at all. What kind of a party would choose to go to support China or not support India at a time like this? Are they really supporting the people? The very people they, that might have been gullible enough to vote for them, perhaps? Why not have an Aam Admi party be a part of such a meeting, a party that legitimately was elected to govern Delhi? Political differences aside, it's time for the government, it's time for all parties to consider what really a national party stands for. Is it just about ideology or is it also about the country? Because where we come from, it's always country first, ideology later. Thank you.